Welcome to a lesson on how to determine the singular value of decomposition of a given matrix. Let A be an M by N matrix, then A equals U times sigma times V transpose is the singular value decomposition of A. U is an M by M orthogonal matrix with columns equal to the unit eigenvectors of A times A transpose. V is an N by N orthogonal matrix whose columns are unit eigenvectors of A transpose times A. Just remember, we're looking for V transpose for the singular value of decomposition. And sigma is an M by N matrix with the singular values of matrix A on the main diagonal and all their entries of zero. We will look at an example where matrix A is a two by three matrix. So let's check the dimensions of U, V, as well as V transpose and sigma. If A is a two by three matrix, M is two and N is three and therefore U is a two by two matrix. Sigma is an M by N matrix, and therefore sigma is a two by three matrix. And V transpose has the same dimensions as matrix V, which is an N by N matrix. V transpose is a three by three matrix. And now let's look at an example. To find the singular value decomposition of the given matrix, we will follow the three steps shown on the right. Number one will determine matrix V, and then the matrix V transpose. Number two, we will determine the singular values of matrix A and then form the matrix sigma. And then step three will determine matrix U by using formulas, which we'll discuss more later. So because matrix V is an N by N orthogonal matrix whose columns are unit eigenvectors of A transpose times A, we began by determining A transpose times A. To find the matrix A transpose, the first row of matrix A becomes the first column of A transpose. The second row of matrix A becomes the second column of A transpose. A transpose times A results in the three by three matrix shown here on the right. You may want to pause the video and check this product. Because we're looking for unit eigenvectors of this three by three matrix, the next step is to determine the eigenvalues. We determine the eigenvalues by solving the equation, the determinant of the difference of matrix A and lambda times the identity matrix equals zero, where matrix A is a three by three matrix resulting from A transpose times A. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we now need to find the determinant of this three by three matrix and set it equal to zero. I will go ahead and assume you can find this determinant, which will give us the characteristic equation. The factored form of the characteristic equation is lambda times the quantity lambda minus 16 times the quantity lambda minus six which must equal zero. Giving the eigenvalues from greatest to least, we have lambda sub one equals 16, lambda sub two equals six, and lambda sub three equals zero. The next step is to find corresponding unit eigenvectors, which will give us the columns of matrix V, and then we can find V transpose. Beginning with lambda sub one equals 16, to find the corresponding eigenvectors, we need to solve the vector equation the difference of matrix A and lambda times the identity matrix times vector X equals a zero vector, where vector X is an eigenvector and matrix A is a result of A transpose times A. I've already set up the vector equation. For the next step, we write the matrix equation. To find the coefficient matrix here, notice how we subtracted 16 along the main diagonal of the three by three matrix we found by multiplying a transpose and A. Next, we write the augmented matrix and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. In reduced row echelon form, notice how the first row indicates X1 minus X3 equals zero. The second row indicates X2 equals zero. X3 is a free variable, we have X3 equals X3. If we let X3 equal T, the corresponding eigenvectors are in the form of T times the vector one, zero, one. If we let t equal one, we would have the eigenvector one, zero, one, which we need to normalize to find vector v sub one, which will be the first column of matrix V. The magnitude of the vector one, zero, one is the square root of two, and therefore the vector v one is equal to the vector with components one divided by square root two, zero, one divided by square root two. Again, this will be the first column of matrix V. And now we need to go through the same process for lambda sub two equals six and lambda sub three equals zero. So for lambda sub two equals six, we have our vector equation. 
the matrix equation, the augmented matrix, and the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Row 1 indicates that x1 plus x3 equals 0. Row 2 indicates x2 plus x3 equals 0. And once again, x3 is a free variable. Letting x3 equal t, the corresponding eigenvector is in the form of t times the vector negative 1, negative 1, 1. Again, letting t equal 1, we have the eigenvector of negative 1, negative 1, 1, which we need to normalize to find the vector v sub 2. The magnitude of the vector negative 1, negative 1, 1 is the square root of 3. And therefore, the vector v sub 2, which will be the second column of matrix v, has components negative 1 divided by square root 3, negative 1 divided by square root 3, and 1 divided by square root 3. And finally, we have lambda sub 3 equals 0. Here we have our vector equation, our matrix equation, the augmented matrix, and the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. First row indicates x1 plus x3 equals 0. Second row indicates x2 minus 2x3 equals 0. And again, x3 is a free variable. Letting x3 equal t, we have the corresponding eigenvectors in the form of t times the vector negative 1, 2, 1. Again, letting t equal 1 and normalizing the eigenvector. The magnitude of the vector negative 1, 2, 1 is the square root of 6. And therefore, vector v sub 3 is the vector with components negative 1 divided by square root 6, 2 divided by square root 6, and 1 divided by square root 6. This will be the third column of matrix V. So again, now that we have vector V1, vector V2, and vector V3, we can form matrix V, where these vectors form the columns of matrix V. And again, for the singular value decomposition, we need V transpose, making the rows of matrix V the columns of V transpose. We now have the vector V transpose. Now we'll determine the singular values of matrix A which will be the entries along the main diagonal of the matrix sigma, and all their entries will be zero. The singular values of matrix A are the square roots of only the positive eigenvalues of either A transpose times A or A times A transpose. Both of these products have the same positive eigenvalues. But we already found the eigenvalues of A transpose times A, which were lambda sub one, lambda sub two, and lambda sub three, we do not include the zero though. We only use the positive eigenvalues to determine the singular values. And the singular values are equal to the square roots of the positive eigenvalues. We indicate singular values by using the lowercase sigma, in this case sigma sub one and sigma sub two, which again need to be given in order from greatest to least. And therefore the first singular value, sigma sub one is equal to the square root of lambda sub one, which equals the square root of 16 or four. Lambda sub two is equal to the square root of lambda sub two, which equals the square root of six. And now we use these values along the main diagonal of matrix U, which is a two by three matrix. All their entries are zero. And now we have the matrix sigma. The last step is to find matrix U, which we will do using formulas. We know for the singular value decomposition, we have A equals U times sigma times V transpose. If we take this equation and multiply both sides by matrix V, V transpose times V is equal to the identity matrix because V and V transpose are orthogonal, which gives us the equation A times V equals U times sigma. And if we work this out, it'll give us the formulas below that we can use to find the vector U sub one and vector U sub two. It works out that matrix A times the vector V sub one is equal to sigma sub one times the vector U sub one. And similarly, matrix A times vector V sub two is equal to sigma sub two times the vector U sub two. From here, we can find vector U sub one and vector U sub two. Solving the first equation for vector U sub one, we would divide both sides by sigma sub one, which gives us vector U sub one equals one divided by sigma sub one times matrix A times the vector V sub one, which I've already written out here. The result is the vector U sub one with components one divided by square root two, one divided by square root two. And using the second equation, we can solve for vector U sub two. Vector U sub two equals one divided by sigma sub two times matrix A times vector V sub two, which again I've already written out. The result is the vector U sub two 
which has components 1 divided by square root 2, negative 1 divided by square root 2. And this is what we need to find the matrix U. These two vectors form the columns of matrix U, which we have here. Now you might be asking, why do we use these formulas rather than find the unit eigenvectors of A times A transpose? Well, remember when it comes to these unit eigenvectors, the first formula gave us vector U sub 1 equal to 1 divided by square root 2, 1 divided by square root 2. But there's also a unit vector in the opposite direction, which if we used, would not give us an accurate singular value decomposition. But by using the formulas, we will get the correct unit eigenvector. So to finish this off, we now know A is equal to U times sigma times V transpose, which I've written out here, which I also checked using the Desmos matrix calculator, and the product on the right is equal to matrix A. I hope you found this helpful.